on Guam. KUAM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. KUAM News headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938, Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, Guam's leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, a father who was beaten unconscious in a Dededo neighborhood died at the hospital after nearly two days on life support. The family in mourning speaking with KUAM about their loss. Plus, a monumental moment in the nation's capital as the president signs the Respect for Marriage Act. Matsuki Hirayama with the story and local reaction. And a trip to the North Pole. Daniel Perez with a report at the AB Wampad International Airport for United's annual fantasy flight, making the holidays extra special for our youth. Half and good evening, everyone. I'm Nick Delgado. Welcome to Primetime. A homicide investigation now underway. A 47-year-old man who was brutally attacked by two drunken men in Dededo is dead. Family members confirming with KUAM News that Arno Nuron did not survive. Authorities say he was on life support. The brothers accused in the attack could now face murder charges in local court. 47-year-old Arno Naroon leaves behind a wife and children. We, the family, were very uh, hurt by what happened to him. Marie he Sauce is his cousin. Everything. He's a very nice guy, very respectful and a good father, good brother. Naroon was hanging out Sunday night along Santa Lorda Street in Dededo when he was suddenly approached by two men who were drunk. Naroon did not know them. The suspects allegedly calling Naroon out to fight before beating him repeatedly, even after he was knocked unconscious and on the ground. It scares me because I have kids and if I don't like this kind of um, things happen around where my kids staying at. Mm -hmm. So I, when we see the body was laying over there, it's like, I was crying. This woman, a neighbor who asked not to be named, tells KUAM she was shocked to find police outside her front door. She says Naroon was a friend of the family. It hurts a lot because he's he's a good guy. Sometimes when he passes, because he always likes to like walk up and down, so sometimes he passes by, he always say hello to my kids. He always asks for my husband, and I told him that he's at work. Then when he, when he see my husband's car is here, so he come over and they just kickback. The alleged attackers were identified in court documents as 28-year-old Branty Wallaby and 20-year-old Jaron Wallaby, who were each charged with aggravated assault. Branty remains held on $25,000 cash bail, but Jaron was released from prison, his case dismissed, after a Superior Court magistrate judge ruled in favor of defense argument that prosecutors lacked evidence to charge him for the crime. Sauce says the family's faith is what is helping them get through this difficult time. I just wish God helped the people that, uh, you know, doing this to him, not to do it again or do it to other families, because it's not uh, good. It's so painful to, especially the kids. But we're just sad because we miss him so much. Naroon died from his injuries on Tuesday. An autopsy performed Thursday morning showed he died from a blunt force head injury. His death ruled a homicide. Our condolences to the family. A man in another news is arrested in connection to a deadly crash in Harmon. It took investigators more than two months to make the arrest. 31-year-old Takla Sarifi is arrested on suspicion of vehicular homicide, failure to yield unsafe lane change and no driver's license. He is being held at the Department of Corrections. It was on October 17th officers responded to the crash along Route 16 in Harmon. As we reported, 37-year-old Jesse Sablon II was riding his motorcycle that night when he was hit by a car, his death marking the 12th traffic-related fatality this year. He allegedly attacked multiple people with a machete and robbed them over the course of six months. 30-year-old 
Anthony Inik is charged with second-degree robbery, assault, aggravated assault, and theft. According to a magistrate's complaint, back on July 30th, he attacked a man with a machete, cutting his arm and upper lip. Authorities learning three months later, Inek allegedly stole a cell phone after asking the owner to use it to make a call. Then, on two different occasions, just last month, Inek allegedly attacked two sleeping men with a machete, stealing a wedding ring from one of them. Before police caught him, Inek allegedly tried to rob another victim, again using a machete. Excitement growing since President Biden signed the historic Respect for Marriage Act, the bill affirming protection of same-sex interracial marriage. Mitsuki Hirayama has more as island residents react to this monumental move. President Biden signs a landmark bill protecting same-sex and interracial marriage in all states. Marriage is a simple proposition. Who do you love? And will you be loyal with that person you love? It's not more complicated than that. Hundreds attending the signing ceremony on the White House lawn, including former Guam resident James Servino. In a Facebook post, he shares his excitement witnessing the historic moment. He writes, We did it, Joe. Signing of the Respect for Marriage Act, HRC members and supporters sent more than 106,567 calls and letters to Congress in support of the Respect for Marriage Act. It's LGBTQ activists like him who moved Congress into codifying marriage equality into the law of the land. Ahead of the signing, Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio says the bill gives him hope for the island's future. He says, with the passage of the Respect for Marriage Act, Congress has restored a measure of security to millions of LGBTQ plus families that are now guaranteed the rights and protections to which they and their children are entitled. Tenorio is the first openly gay elected lieutenant governor. Attorney William Pesh also shares his reaction. Obviously, I'm, I'm delighted that we do have, have um, protections that are now codified and that we can depend on. Um, as someone who is married, um, someone who has a same-sex marriage, I have children, I have a grandchild, uh, the thought that I could drive, you know, go into another state when I'm back in the mainland and be in a state that doesn't recognize my marriage, that does not recognize the fact that I have two children and that I have a grandchild um, is uh, really unacceptable to be perfectly candid. Although Pesh is elated to have same-sex marriage recognized in every state, he can't hide his disappointment in one portion of the bill. I will say I, in, in some respects, I'm, I'm disappointed that um, you know, it, it doesn't specifically state that every state and territory has to allow for same-sex marriages. The Respect for Marriage Act does not require states to issue same-sex marriage licenses. And with the overturning of Roe v. Wade that protects abortion rights, he fears Obergefell v. Hodges could see the same fate. The possibility that that could happen is unnerving, disappointing, um, scary, um, and, and I just hope that we get some sort of reassurance that that can't happen. The 2015 Supreme Court decision legalized same-sex marriage in all states, but if it gets overturned, 35 states will have the legal right to deny issuing same-sex marriage licenses, even with the Respect for Marriage Act in place. Mitsuki Hariyama, KUAM News. Thanks, Mitsuki. Well, Speaker Teresa Lahi is not giving up on her bid to revamp Guam's medical malpractice resolution process, something she's been working on for the past two terms. The speaker's bid to place her malpractice revamp bill on the agenda failed Wednesday, but she has followed up with a lengthy appeal to her colleagues to reconsider, where she outlined how she has addressed some of the main concerns. You're still able to do arbitration if that's what you wanna do and use specialists like doctors to make that decision. You're still able to go to mediation. You're still able to talk to patients prior to any claims being filed. And if none of that works, you can go to a government-funded judge to make that pre-trial screening and make sure this claim is not frivolous before you go to court. The fear of opening the floodgates from for frivolous suits has been one of the main concerns of the medical community. So how are you saying her bill has gone through several major makeovers in the past two terms to address the concerns of both doctors and patients? 
in every case when there's there's some some kind of reform in this area that's proposed, um, they're going to try to keep status quo. And um, but I think we've done a very good balance of of keeping the special protections and adding on some. And all we've reduced is the cost of arbitration and the cost of a pre-screening process. Session resumes tomorrow, and the speaker says she will try once more to place her bill on the agenda. Well, we have more news coming up. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. my dreams in the sky oh in my pursuit of happiness oh, oh. Nothing means more to us than helping you pursue your happiness. Bank of Hawaii, live your happy. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Penelin from the mayor's office is here and uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit so when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful to the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for child care? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. When you're built for tailgating, you're built for winning. Winning at storage. Winning at parking. Winning at technology. Winning at comfort. Winning at winning. What you need to know from the Northern Marianas. Follow KUAM Cinemai on Instagram for the latest regional headlines. Welcome back. The number of lives claimed in Guam's waters nearly tripling this year. The Guam Fire Department Search and Rescue Bureau responding to each of those tragedies. We spent some time with the team, seeing firsthand the tough job they do to rescue others while ensuring each of them make it back to shore alive. Just outside East Aganya Bay, the winds and seas in our region expected to pick up from now into Sunday. Officials warning if you are not a strong swimmer to stay out of the water. In our job, we, we see some, you know, horrendous things. Firefighter Andy Lee is with the Guam Fire Search and Rescue Bureau. If you call 911 for an emergency out in the water, chances are it's his crew responding. This year, the team responding to more than a handful of calls that ended in tragedy. It breaks the heart when, when this island is so small, right? And, um, you know, it... 21 first responders recorded three drownings so far this year. That number has nearly tripled, now at eight confirmed drownings. The response is part of the job. The survival for both them and the distressed swimmers is the mission. KUAM joined the rescue team, getting involved in each training scenario. In Guam, it's, it's very, very um, different from, from like the state side, right? Uh, we, we have coral reefs and the rip currents here can change basically every six hours based on the tide. So depending on which side of the island you're on, um, the, the usual thing that people tell you is to swim laterally um, uh, from the rip current, right? Swim perpendicular to the rip current. So on the, on the west side of the island, yes, uh, that's, that, that can happen. That, that's something that can, that can help you, uh, especially because the distance from the shore to the reef. Mm -hmm. But on the east side of the island, that distance is very, very short. It's, um, it's from 20 to 100 feet, 
before you're actually in the danger zone, which is the uh, the breakers, the waves. He adds it's best to stay calm and let the rip currents take you out to safer waters. Don't try to fight it because fatigue and panic is, is the number one killer. Never go out on your own, right? Don't, don't be out there by yourself. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're an experienced swimmer or not. Um, anything can happen. A lesson and a reminder to stay prepared when heading out for a swim in Guam's waters. In regional news, NMI Delegate Gregorio Sablon pressed Veterans Affairs officials in a congressional hearing on how the PACT Act's expanded health care benefits for veterans can reach the island's shores for those in dire need of it. Regional correspondent Tomas Maglonia with the story. We're 8,000 miles from my district. Uh, and uh, so just that question, are they required? Delegate Sablon pressing VA officials in a recent hearing at the nation's capital on how the PACT Act, a bipartisan bill expanding health care for veterans exposed to toxins during service, impacts veterans in the Marianas. Sablon wants to know if the NMI's only VA contracted doctor is required to refer patients off island for more adequate care. The short answer, yes. We do try to fill uh, gaps in care capacity in any way we can, and one of those ways is contracted uh, physicians and providers. We are trying as much as possible to hire more physicians in our roles at VA because we feel that those physicians are best equipped to meet veteran needs. But he says that a statutory cap on salaries makes it difficult to compete in the market, especially with specialty physicians. In September, the VA was on Guam and Saipan to register those who served and may have been exposed to Agent Orange and other airborne hazards during the war. The VA says there are an estimated 3,600 veterans in the region. Sablon took issue with the VA describing the territories as separate from the country. Territories are in the country. We are, they're not outside of the definition of country. We are a part of the United States of America. So we're not a, the country and the territories. We are the country. Sablon says he continues to work on establishing a community-based outpatient clinic, or CBOC, in the northern Marianas. The final question is, what happens if veterans were to comrades, those who may have difficulties? And I, I believe that they, sh they have a right to think that, and I believe the act, uh, the PAC Act does address those uh, issues. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News on Saipan. Thanks, Tomas. Back here on Guam, classes will certainly look different for students at Ukudu High and FBLG Middle in the new year. The schools will share a campus in Dededo where then, when they return from the holiday break. That's why students at those schools will get to start their Christmas break one day early. You heard that right. No school tomorrow for students who go to Ukudu and FBLG. This will allow staff at both schools time to begin the transition as students will be doing double session at the home of the Bulldogs when they return from the break on January 5th. As we reported, public education leaders decided to move the middle schoolers at FB to Ukudu following multiple safety concerns at the Jigo campus. The Department of Public Works Office of Highway Safety will be hosting an educational exhibit tomorrow at the Agana Shopping Center Court from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's part of the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over and Drive High Get a DUI campaigns, which kicked off yesterday and will run through New Year's Day. The exhibit aiming to raise a public awareness on impaired driving and to remind motorists to drive reasonably this holiday season. At this hour, several children from Rainbows for All Children Guam are getting ready for their United Fantasy flight to the North Pole. Our Daniel Perez is at the Guam airport where there's definitely excitement in the air. Hey Daniel. Hi uh, everybody, we are at the Guam International Airport where we are about to take flight dashing through the air on the fantasy flight courtesy of United Airlines and of course their recipients. Miss, Miss Maria, tell us all about um, how the kids are excited and how they've been waiting for this. Oh my god, you know they have been expecting this ever since we gave them the message. They couldn't sleep, they couldn't eat. I said you better eat or a Santa will not give you a gift. So they're all what should I say, overwhelmed with joy. And these children really need this kind of uh, importance and specialty because they do matter. So um, I can't, I can't, no words can explain. Even for me as an adult, I'm all excited too. <laughs> so I think 
think that United Airlines, with their big heart, has really touched the lives of our very vulnerable children who have lost a loved one in the lives. So thank you, thank you for for this. Um, what should I say? Overwhelming joy of love and faith. Thank you, Miss. So, and also joining me is Mr. Justin. Marion, he is the general manager for United Airlines. Tell us all about how Rainbows for All Children Guam were recipients of this year's great fantasy flight. Sure, hey, so thank you. So, you know, United Airlines takes a lot of pride uh, in hosting our annual fantasy flight event. And, you know, as part of our uh, marketing campaign, you know, about good leads the way, we wanted to make sure that we are impactful, not only in the air, but also on the ground and giving back to our communities in which we live in. Uh, Rainbows uh, for All Children here on Guam was a perfect organization to choose this year uh, to be a special guest of United Airlines, uh, where we're going to take them on a Boeing 737 aircraft and bring them over to the North Pole today. One thing that stands out for us here at United is that we're super excited. It's our first time going back up in the air, uh, flying since the pandemic started. So we are happy to have the Rainbows uh, organization here on Guam participate in this year's annual fantasy flight event. All right, well, you heard it here first, guys. Well, we gotta check it out because we don't wanna miss this flight. Going to the North Pole, we'll have more tomorrow on in prime time. For now, I'm Daniel Perez, KUA News. Thanks, Daniel. Great job there. Make sure to take a selfie with Santa. Now for a look at your world at home. Here's a view captured down at the Molesso Pier. Families there enjoying time fishing and swimming. The Guam National Weather Service predicting Friday will be windy, partly sunny with 30% scattered rain. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I have some programming news on Monday's NFL games right here on the stations of KUAM. But first off, an update on our swimming team competing in the World Swimming Championships in Australia. Check it out. The Ultimate Summer Showdown down under in Melbourne, Australia is the host for the 2022 FINA World Swimming Championships with close to 1,000 competitors from 160 nations. Team Guam competed in the 4x50 meter mixed medley relay, finishing with a time of 202.96. 
Amaya Bollinger led off with the backstroke, followed by Mia Lee with the breaststroke. Jimi Hendrix jumped in with the butterfly, while teammate Izzy Poppy finished with the 50-meter freestyle. Here's Regine Bisco Lee with more from the World Swimming Championships. Mia, what message do you have for young swimmers that are interested in, in the sport? Um, if you're in it, just keep at it. Just believe in yourself. Um, whatever, any obstacles that you have, just use it as motivation to keep pushing. Yeah. What event are you looking forward to here in the World Champs? Um, probably the 100 fly. Um, you know, it's my been four years since my last short course world so uh, you know we'll see see how it is to swim on the big stage for the first time in a couple years. Guam competed against countries from People's Republic of China, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, Chinese Taipei, Guatemala, Australia and the Federated States of Micronesia. Now for some programming news Monday December 19th at four in the morning NFL on CBS the first game of a doubleheader for you Kansas City Chiefs at Houston Texans. Keep it locked to KUAM TV 11 at 725 in the morning. More NFL on CBS. Game to the Cincinnati Bengals at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Are you ready for more? Introducing GTA 5G. More speed. Experience fast 5G speeds while streaming video, gaming online, or downloading files. More reliable. Guam's most reliable network with more 5G coverage than the competitors. More value. All GTA postpaid wireless customers get 5G access for free. GTA 5G. 5G done right. Howdy, folks. Nobody loves a Guam potluck more than I do. That's why I always bring my world-famous chicken served any way you like it. Original recipe, extra crispy tenders, Kentucky Fried Wings, and more. Hmm. All right. And nothing completes a meal like KFC's signature sides. Hot mashed potatoes with gravy, coleslaw, and a flaky biscuit. The world's favorite chicken, right here on the island, and only at KFC Guam. Whoops. Well, it is finger looking good. You don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around You can count on me You can count on me for life Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance, count on us for life the first ever Nanny Market is opening over the weekend. Daniel Perez has more on how innovative children on Guam are showcasing the skills they learned in the field of entrepreneurship. The holiday season is now in full swing, and if you're still looking to grab some gifts, the Nanny Market just might have what you're looking for. Powered by Inspire Marianas, the Nanny Market program taught 24 ambitious children about the fundamental business concepts and the basics of owning a business. The program also had the kids learn from local entrepreneurs in the community who provided mentorship, lessons, and encouragement before opening their own business at the upcoming Nanny Market. Program coordinator Daria Calvo shared what you can expect from the first ever Nanny Market. Some of them are selling handmade soaps. We have someone making, um, she calls it pot pajamas, basically sleeves for planters and pots. Uh, we have someone, a, a little girl, you'll meet her soon, and she created stickers and um, the design for her stickers. So she'll be selling stickers. Uh, we have someone who's selling handmade wreaths and ornaments and uh, greeting cards. It's just a, an array of awesome things that they created. 24 kids are taking part in the Nenny Market and are looking forward to sharing their products with residents. It's been so rewarding watching them just progress through this program and I'm really excited for the community to come come on down support them and um, you know hopefully get inspired to to turn their dreams into reality. The Nanny Market opens this Saturday December 17 starting from 10 a.m. and will be at the Guam Premier Outlets. See you at the Nanny Market! Finally tonight your Cold Stone Crew Marie Birthday Club shout out submitted on KUEM.com.
a most happy birthday on December 15th, a Thursday this year, to Chrissy Jean Santos from all of your friends and family. Bill St. Nicholas, happy birthday, love, from your family, who they say loves you unconditionally. That's awesome, and that's forever. KUN kid Zariah hopes a blonde 10, 10 years old. Zariah's hit the decade mark. This is epic. This is great. Rock it. Own it. Celebrate, your shout-out says. Happy 10th birthday, Zariah. Hugs and kisses from mom, dad, and Zane, and all of us here at KUM, your extended family. We're really proud of you. Rosendo Perez Jr., happy birthday number 81, and may we share many more years together. We love you very much. Say Megan, Marina, Aubriana, and Amanda. And one more KUM kid to get to, Joe Sir. Hey, DJ Joe Sir. Everybody knows him. They know him from the link. They know him from the hotspot. A local celebrity. Obviously, he's been uh, performing in clubs for years. He volunteers at the Mongong Toto Mighty Parish Church and everything. Joe Sir, longtime member of our family. We would not be the success that we are here at KUM if it wasn't for you. We hope you have a fantastic birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Joe Sir, and happy birthday, Raya, as well as everyone out there celebrating. That's your Thursday primetime show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. Stay safe and good night.